Hello everybody. I'm Nali Kolapane from the Swinburne University, Melbourne, Australia. I'm presenting the paper titled Gaussian Process as a Benchmark for Optimal Sensor Placement Strategy. I'm presenting this paper on behalf of Dr. Karthik Tyagarajan and Professor Sarat Kodagoda from the University of Technology, Sydney. The agenda for this presentation is fairly simple. I'm going to start with a background, then present a problem statement, and then a solution. So I start off with the background. So this paper is about a theoretical aspect of measurement taking. So measurement taking can be seen as a way of uncovering reality through measurements. So when you try to uncover reality through measurements, what can happen can be demonstrated as three different cases. So that's what this illustration in this slide does. So the first case is you can uncover reality through two fewer measurements. So when you take two fewer measurements, what happens is you will uncover some information, but your information will be obviously mismatching to reality. So that's not going to be good for you. So the case two is you take just enough measurements. So when you take just enough measurements, you will be able to uncover reality just about right, which is good enough for you. And case three is you take too many measurements. Now, when you take too many measurements, you might be spending a lot of time and a lot of resources, but in terms of new information, you will be adding very little to what you could have uncovered from case two. So that's the, the drawback or the downside of case three. So when we do complex measurement taking tasks, it's extremely important for us to avoid case one, avoid case three, and try to reach case two, or at least get as close as possible to case two. So that's kind of the philosophical problem uh, this paper is trying to discuss, and it's also the problem uh, we have discussed through a series of our recent papers. So that's kind of the background of, of this um, paper. And that kind of optimal measurement taking becomes all the more important uh, in environments uh, which are challenging to measure. Those environments which you can't easily access and you don't want to spend much time on, like underground infrastructure, like sewers and water pipes. So when you have to do measurements in environments like this, optimizing your measurement taking becomes all the more important. Now I go on to the problem statement. So the problem we are focusing on is limited to 2D. So we are addressing a, a measurement taking task done in a 2D space. So we are given a bounded 2D space and the space can have a K number of boundaries and these boundaries can be nonlinear. And a general point within this space will have a coordinate X and Y. And we say this space will carry a scalar field given as G equals F of X and Y. And we are supposed to measure G against X and Y such that we are able to uncover the function F. So this function F is, is kind of the reality. So if I go back to my example in the background, so I have denoted a reality and a measurement here. So the blue dot is the measurement and the black line is the reality. So in the 2D case, the function F is unknown to us and that function F is the reality and we are supposed to uncover that function F as the reality. So how we are supposed to do that is through measurements and measuring G against X and Y is what we should do to uncover F. So going further, we are supposed to capture a set of measurements just about enough to estimate F and the estimate of F should converge under some convergence criteria C. So that is kind of like the simple mathematical representation of the problem we are trying to solve in this paper. With that, I go on to the proposed solution. 
So the proposed solution is a Gaussian process based algorithm for measurement taking. I'm going to present this in terms of a flow chart. So to start with, we need to take some prior measurements. So as a rule of thumb, we propose roughly 50% of the measurements taken evenly spaced across your 2D measurement space. So you have a nice little diagram to the right of the slide. So that diagram is going to get animated as I walk along this flow chart. So suppose you have taken your prior measurements and the next step is you should predict the unmeasured points. So the prediction is done using Gaussian process. So the predictions are what um, is marked here as red dots uh, in the diagram. And once you have done uh, the prediction, the next step is to check convergence. So we have defined a convergence criteria in this paper. So you check convergence. So suppose you have reached convergence at this, uh, at this stage, then you don't have to collect any more measurements. Convergence reached means you're done. But the chances are in the first few goes, you are not uh, going to reach your convergence criteria. So in case you have not reached your convergence criteria, the next thing that should be done is to locate a point that is best to be measured. So that locating uh, of the next best point is done through the maximum uncertainty principle and the uncertainties used are computed through Gaussian process. So once you have located uh, a new point to take a measurement, you obviously go and collect a new measurement and now you have one more measurement added to your set. And after collecting the new measurement, you have to come back to your prediction stage. So remember that you have added a new measurement to your set now. So you have one less unmeasured points. So what you do now is predict the unmeasured points again and then check the convergence criteria again. And I will walk through this um, flow chart a few times for clarity. So you check your convergence criteria again and suppose you have not reached your convergence, then you locate another next best measurement point. And then once you've located the point based on uncertainty, you perform the measurement and you come back to predicting the unmeasured points. Check your convergence again, locate a point, measure the point and come back to your prediction stage. And then you go on to convergence uh, checking again and suppose at this stage you have reached convergence. So you have reached convergence means there is no reason for you to keep on going taking measurements. So what you do is you stop. So to the left of the slide, you see a, a red rectangle. So that's basically the convergence criteria we have defined in this paper. So you can stop measurement taking. So what happens is when you stop the measurement taking, you still have a, a set of unmeasured points. That's the key. So you haven't spent time measuring those red dots that are remaining in this figure. But what you can do is after you have stopped, you can use Gaussian process to predict those unmeasured points. And the chances are if you have converged well, the predictions will be quite close to reality. So that's kind of what we demonstrate through the results of this paper. So this approach is not entirely new. So this approach is, is basically discussed a lot in Bayesian optimization. So what we do in this paper is present it in a very succinct uh, form along with uh, a convergence criteria for clarity and ease of use. So that's kind of the proposed solution of this paper. And how we demonstrate the results uh, of this paper is through uh, a sensing experiment using a pulse ready current sensor and the pulse ready current sensor is used as a cover meter to map uh, reinforcement rods uh, inside concrete. So that's kind of our little experiment to demonstrate this principle. So that is kind of uh, the proposed solution and the contribution of this paper. And that brings me to the end of this brief presentation. I would like to thank you all very much for your attention and I'm happy to take any questions. And also feel free to contact any of the authors if even if you have uh, any questions to be raised after the presentation. Thank you very much.